everyone, I'm Jamie Little. Welcome to Indy 500 Race Day. I know you can't be here today and we are as sad as you are, but the good news is we're here to take you behind the scenes and show you everything that's happening leading up to the 104th running of the Indy 500. It's all about Andretti Autosport today. Yeah, these last five months have been totally crazy, not only for us, but the world, obviously, and uh, you know we're just all just trying to get our way through it. I think I think Mogust is what we're going with. This Mogust is definitely a bit surreal. Just the the knowledge of the fact that you're gonna go into the race without the best part of the race. I'm not one to play victim. You know, I feel like everybody's going through um, um, some sort of just change and uh, craziness. Weirdest thing was probably showing up to St. Pete and then being told you're not going to race the day before you're supposed to race. You know, for me, the way I am, I'm such a hermit when I'm home and I have off time that I don't know if, if, if somebody didn't tell me we were in a pandemic, I'm not sure I'd know. I don't leave my house when I'm home anyway. This year, it's just been so stop and go so many times that it's been very difficult to, to feel that rhythm of a natural racing season. I mean, we're just waiting, we're stopping, we're going, we're, we're, we're receiving new protocols daily on what race is going to happen, what isn't. And I don't say this selfishly, like I truly mean it. Like I almost want the guy that wins to be someone that's already won before. You know, we're not going to get the opportunity to walk over pit wall on race morning during driver intros and see the entire front straight just alive with people. Because like you don't want someone to win this for the first time and not be able to experience kind of the, the energy that exists in this place that's unmatched anywhere on the planet. And just the uncertainty of it all. Uh, what, you, what you can, what you can't do. Is it okay to go to the grocery store? I mean, everybody's faced it. It's unprecedented for sure. But yeah, professionally, yeah, it's changed a lot. And, uh, you know, it's one of those where we're pretty thankful to have Roger ha um, having been just taken over. Um, probably not an ideal time for him as a businessman, but his heart's in the right place. And he, uh, you know, he might have saved this sport. The drivers amongst us, we were talking that we were so thankful that even though we're going through this, this very tough time, that Roger's the one guiding the ship. I keep telling him, bad for you, Roger, but good for us. <laughs> those parade laps at the start of the race. It's the first time that we go around and see all four corners, not just as, you know, metal grandstands. They are vibrant and moving and living almost. Coming out through the tunnel and, and seeing nobody instead of 300,000 people. We're paid as entertainers, so without the fans, it's definitely strange. And uh, we're hoping that they, they support us on TV so we can keep doing this for them. I'm Michael Andretti, and this is my hot sauce. Yes, you heard it, folks. You asked and now it's here. Michael Andretti's ball position hot sauce. Don't forget the heat. It smells like crap. It smells like crap? Wait till you taste it. This hot sauce goes great on anything. Really, Michael? No, I'm serious. Anything. Anything? 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 Anything! Feed it to your pets! Look how much this dog loves it! You put it in your car. It's just like gasoline, except you put it on food. Zach Beach isn't scared. So why are you? You can brush your teeth with it. Toothpaste is for losers! Wow, Alex! That would be gross if it wasn't so f***ing awesome! Spice up that boring engineering meeting! Don't forget the heat! the hell, Mike? This is my debrief sheet. You're gonna need more downforce now because it's hot out! Buy this sauce or I will kick your ass. He will! Just ask Sam Hornish's dad! Whoa! An ass kicking from a legend? Sign me up! But wait, there's more. Order now to win a chance to stay all night in Michael's motor coach. Please? Limited supply. Call now. Operators are standing by. Michael Andretti's Pole Position Hot Sauce is not a real product. This is a parody in no way affiliated with Michael Andretti, Andretti Autosport, Andretti Autosport Holding Company, the Andretti family, or any of its affiliates, sponsors, friends, relatives, or pets. You should never put hot sauce in your hair or in your car without first consulting a doctor or a mechanic. Side effects include cheering for Team Penske, watching NASCAR, and male pattern baldness. No animals were harmed during the filming of this commercial. Fast Start sales event is going on now, so get here fast. 
Maybe not this fast. Right now, save on new cars and trucks with 0% financing for 84 months or new payments for 120 days. Hurry to the AutoNation store near you. So, can I drive your car? <laughs> Well, welcome back. I am now joined by the chairman and CEO of Andretti Autosport, Mr. Michael Andretti. Good morning. Good Happy morning. race day. Yeah, we're excited. You know, we got uh, I think a lot of good bullets in our gun here and we've got a good shot. Well, you know, when they talk about the race, they're saying it may be difficult to pass, but good thing for you guys. You got five out of your six cars starting in the top 10. How important was qualifying for you? I think it's going to be more important than some other years because track position is going to be key. So uh, I think it's going to come down to execution, not making mistakes, getting good, consistent pit stops. And I think if we do that, I think we have cars fast enough to stay in the up front. It was a huge day on pole day. Marco Andretti, your son, gets the pole for the biggest race for you guys. I watched you from above run up and give him a hug. There was so much media and so many people down there at that moment. What was it like for you to see that? Oh, it was amazing. You know, I, I, I got to say, you know, building up to it, you know, we had four cars, right? You know, the last four cars we were to go and the first three did not do very well we you know they think they got a little bit too aggressive with their setups and uh, with the conditions and you know, at that point I didn't have much hope that you know Marcos we thought was going to be doing the same but uh, you know they did a great job they didn't they, they stuck to their guns they didn't change the car from the day before and, and it was just enough to get the job done but I gotta say coming off of turn four I saw he was like 300 still ahead and I'm like is he gonna be able to keep it down the front straightaway and uh, and he did, that was so awesome, you know, so, so proud of him because he really drove the heck out of it the last two laps. I mean, the car was like really loose and he was still kept his foot in and hanging on and, uh, you know, job well done to all, all of them on the 98 car. Yeah, and they were the fastest car leading up to it. So a lot of us thought, you know, it's his to lose, but mentally he just seems like he is so focused. Like he knows this is his chance and he's tried many times, but what do you tell him as a dad, Michael, before the race? Anything, any advice? I'm not advice? telling him anything. I'm just letting him do his thing. You know, he knows what he needs to do. He's been there many times. He's run very well at this race. Should probably have three wins by now. I mean, he has, he's led more laps than a lot of, a lot of winners of this race. And, and so he knows what he needs to do. And I'm not going to bother him. Just let him do his thing. So something really cool is happening. It's an all Andretti front row. In a way, you and your dad are gonna be leading the field. The news came out on Friday, and then Marco's starting the field right behind you. First off, I'm thinking of you as a passenger to Mario. Yeah, What's I'm not sure gonna I'm gonna like? like that. In fact, we may fight about it, who's gonna drive you know, right up until the last minute there, but uh, no, that's really cool. You know, uh, Roger called me the other day and asked, asked if I'd do it, and I was honored to do it. You know, I think it's, uh, it's great, uh, you know. It's a great story, and uh, you know, so proud of what we've all done here as a family, and uh, I think it's great. The history runs deep, and Marco said something that I thought was fantastic. He said, "Maybe since we're racing here in the month of August, there's no such thing as an Andretti curse." <laughs> Maybe I don't know. You know, I don't know if I believe in curses, but uh, there's always been something hanging over our heads, and that may be a good point. You know, hopefully, uh, you know. If that happens, we got to talk to Roger if he can at least move it to June. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiate with him yeah, right. a little bit. And, you know, no bones about it. There's no fans here. It's going to be very different. This is the largest sporting event in the world, and for the first time, there are no fans. How have you guys been just dealing with the ambiance and it being so different? It's very strange, very, very, very strange, you know, and I know race day is going to be really strange because one of the magic moments, I think, is like that first, that last half hour building up to the race when you're out on the grid and all the people are right there real close to, the, to you and you can literally feel the energy and you're going to really miss that energy because it's not going to be there, but, uh, you know, but at least we're racing. That's the main thing. You know, we're racing and, you know, we'll get through this and hopefully put on a good show for everybody on TV and, and then we'll have hopefully 300,000 people back here next May. Absolutely. What's it been like for you, Michael, in these crazy times for everyone, but to be a race team owner and you have so much going on and the sponsors and all that, how have you guys been able to just stay afloat and get back to the racetrack? It's been a it's been a tough time, you know, uh, but uh, you know we'll we'll get through it. You know we have great people and great minds within the team that will figure out a way to, to get through it. We have great partners, a lot of great sponsors that that have been with us a long time that are you know supporting us and 
you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it through it. But uh, it, it's been really, really strange. And I'm sure we're not the only ones. I think the whole world's in a very strange moment right now. And uh, hopefully we get through this quickly. Well, thankfully we, we have racing and people can watch this race and it is going to be a great celebration. And there is one thing that's different this year. Your cousin John Andretti yeah. lost his battle with cancer this year. What did he mean to you and this track and this race? Well, John was one of my best friends. He just, uh, you know, ever since we were kids, you know, we always were together and, uh, you know, it was a huge loss. And I, I'm, I sort of have a feeling John may have something to do with uh, what's been going on here as well. You know, I know he, he loved this place and, uh, you know, he, he loved Marco and, and I could see he was probably pushing him down the straightaway those last couple inches there. He knew his way around this place. Oh, yeah. So when it comes to trying to win this race today, what's it going to take? Because it is a little different now with the aero screen. Track position again, you know, it's going to take trying to keep that track position, staying out front, being in the top three. Uh, and again, good consistent pit stops. They don't have to be the fastest, but they just got to be no mistakes, no mistakes. And if you do that, I think uh, we do have cars, I think, quick enough to win the race, but we still, as a team, have to execute. Yeah, well, six cars in the field. I don't know how you're managing it all. <laughs> You've won this race as an owner multiple times, but how different would it be if your son Marco went to victory lane? I, it might be the first time I've cried in, like, <laughs> forever, you know. I mean, it would be a very emotional moment, you know, and I think, uh, I think it'd be so amazing for us, but uh, I think it'd be great for the sport as well. And, and uh, you know, I think uh, him winning the pole has been a great story, and I can't even imagine what it'd be if he won the race. Well, and Andretti is a beloved name around here. A lot of people will be rooting for you guys, so best of luck. Thank you. All right. That's Michael Andretti. He has a busy day ahead, and we have plenty more to come. Stay tuned after a word from our sponsors. John had a really positive outlook. He, he believed he was going to beat it. He was strong and he believed there was nothing he couldn't beat. He kept his life very simple. It was very much, um, it was really a kind of four pillars. You know, we always went to church. He loved his family, my mom, my sisters, me obviously. Um, the ph philanthropic effort, you know, with Race for Riley and then Checker for Andretti and then racing. So those were really the four things he built his life on. He always went above and beyond. It didn't matter what he was doing. And to him, the whole purpose of life was, was to give back, was to persevere, was to show um, hard work, was to be hardworking, was to show that you were 100% committed to everything. He always used to tell me, uh, you don't have to be the smartest or the fastest or the strongest necessarily to be successful. You just have to work the hardest. The first thing that comes to mind is his commitment he was always, a lot of people talk about how he was always committed to racing, but for me as his daughter, I think about how committed he was as a father. We'll keep trying, we'll keep fighting. He never, he never gave up. I honestly, um, I wasn't, I was worried, but he, he was so confident he was going to beat it. It never went through his mind that he would ever get to, we would ever get to this point. Um, there was an event at my school that was um, a day in the life of a medical student and he came and spent the whole day with me. He took a medical school test and all this kind of stuff and he wasn't feeling well and he made all that happen. And on top of that, he was advocating for Check It for Andretti, still doing Race for Riley. So he's just one of those guys that he gives 100% to everything he does. One of the stories that he told me was when he won at Daytona, you know, he had a really good car and he had, was very like excited about the next day. So I was in the... Um, in the motorhome the night before and I was young I was like five or six years old and he goes you know who's gonna you know who's gonna be Dale Earnhardt tomorrow and I, and, he, and I was like who and he goes your dad and he goes, you know you're gonna be Jeff Gordon tomorrow I was like who and he goes your dad he was a no excuses kind of guy um, and he always thought about others before himself always 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 it was a heavy burden for all of us to bear and we would do it all over again but it's an impact on the entire family that you need to think about you could just get a colonoscopy, and then you would know, right? I think the, the big thing is, is dad, Dad's doctor told him, you know, you're healthy, you're fine. You don't need to get a colonoscopy at 51 and 52 and 53. And I think when you have a doctor that tells you that, you need to go get a new doctor. 
You know, do you want to take that chance or do you want to just go get a colonoscopy? Early detection is extremely important. Ever since Dad was diagnosed, that's something he was always really passionate about is getting people in to schedule their colonoscopies. You need to go get a colonoscopy because it's not about you. Um, I had a, it, it's about your family and the people that are around you and the people that care about you. Hey, this is Alex. Sorry I missed your call. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hey Alex, it's me. I really needed an oil change and Napa is having a great sale on Castrol Edge this month, so I bought some and left it on the counter. If you could change it for me, that'd be a big help. You know how to change oil, right? Surely you do. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys, we got this bud. In both racing and investing, winning demands consistency. Lap after lap after lap. Gainbridge offers intuitive annuity products within an innovative digital platform to help you protect and grow your money, empowering you to save with confidence. Gainbridge, proud sponsor of the Indianapolis 500. You know, the relationship with Genesis was just one of those incredibly kind of fortuitous, timing is everything opportunities. They've been just such an incredible partner up to this point. They have committed and really jumped in with both feet. They were the entitlement sponsor in, in the race in Texas. Uh, they've bought a, a ton of, of advertising, whether it's at the airport here in Indy or billboards around town. There's going to be commercials during the race here for the 500. So they've, they've really done it right. And to be able to, to work with a partner that understands the best way to do it and to activate like that is, is really a dream come true for myself and, and everybody at Andretti Autosport. The keys to winning the Indianapolis 500 are clearly to have a good setup, but it's also strategy from start to finish. Now we've seen Andretti Autosport go to victory lane five different times over the years, and they've done it different ways. Back in 2014 with Ryan hunter Ray, he was on the gas with Elio Castroneves all the way to the finish. Then in 2016, here you had the rookie, Alexander Rossi. He pulled off the win by cruising to the finish because he was best at saving fuel. It's all about different strategies and who has the best one. So now let's hear from the guys who have that thinking behind them to see what the keys are in their eyes today. One of the keys to, to race strategy is, is not to get too fixated upon one strategy. When you have that many cars and personalities and drivers and different feedback, right? Like when one guy's loose might be another guy's normal. You do your best to plan and, and try and come up with all the hypotheticals. We kind of calibrate that the first day where everybody runs kind of an agreed upon package on all the cars set up the same. Clearly you had your game plan going in, but it, it rarely sticks to that to a T. And we can compare notes, compare data, compare cars, compare engines, compare everything. Some days you're not going to get it right, but if you don't follow the process and all have that trust in each other, all those days where you are going to get it right are not going to happen. It is something that you absolutely improvise and adapt on the fly that changes lap by lap. And then from there, we start branching out. Um, now there's so much information to us available over telemetry that, that pretty much by halfway through each, each stint, we have a pretty good read on what the, what the, the car is doing. All the engineers are on a chat group during the whole session, right? So you get pretty quick feedback. And everything from fuel mixture to the fuel mileage you're getting to how the car's handling. Right, so we're watching how much throttle they're carrying, how close to cars they can follow. And everyone needs keen observation to know what your competitors are doing. Decisions that we make in, in what we're gonna do in the pit are generally where we can't help him control what he needs to control. You're trying to keep the driver as confident as possible, as comfortable as possible, keep the tires under the car for the whole fuel load. For the most part, our philosophy is, particularly under a yellow flag stop, is try to not make wing changes because they're going to cost time in the pits and that's going to cost us track position. I mean, that's what you're going for really is 
to be able to follow really close and be able to get a run and line up a pass. The easiest one to do because it's the least time consuming in terms of trying to minimize the time for pit stop is to play with tire pressure. It's a, it's a really interesting and it's an intense time that you're running on there. You feel so mentally drained at the end of a race because of all those factors that you're trying to process. Um, it's, it's pretty intense. DHL has been absolutely fundamental to this team, my career, and so much more. That 28 DHL, yellow and red, has become one of those iconic liveries. I think we're on 11 years now of that consistency and running up at the front. Great partners, like family. Yeah, I look forward to celebrating with them again at Victory Lane. We're here because a meal gap that has negatively impacted our state for decades is simply not acceptable. We are out here to make sure no one runs on empty. No one should live without the basic building blocks of health. Chief among them is food. And we are announcing a $1 million matching grant to the No One Runs on Empty campaign. You too can follow Anthem's lead by donating at gleaners.org slash no one runs on empty. The last time an Andretti was on the pole for the Indianapolis 500, Marco was only two months old. That was back in 1987 when his grandfather Mario Andretti led the field to green. Well, that all changed one week ago when Marco and the U.S. concrete team took it to the top. He is sitting on the pole for the 104th running of the Indianapolis 500. Let's now take a look back at that historic day. First memory of Indy is the old Speedway Motel. Um, you know, I think playing up there in the balcony, trying to get my lap times down on, around the, the hotel, uh, listening to Carnegie. Watching closed circuit, watching four of my family members at one time, and trying to sneak into the pits illegally. His father, Michael, never started on the pole position at the Indy 500. His grandfather Mario did some 33 years ago. Could Marco create a special piece of Andretti in the 500 history here today? This is one place where it's, there's one position that matters. 500 miles is a long time. And the first two-thirds is about putting yourself in the, in the position and to be there in the shootout at the end. Harsh closing one more time. Coming out of four. Down the front stretch. It's a drag race. Marco Andretti. Hornish, who's going to win at the strike? It's Hornish. Oh, Hornish wins. Hornish wins by six one-hundredths of a second. It's a bummer. I, I got to take advantage of every shot out here. I really do because seconds nothing. Yeah, I think why you saw me so mad is, uh, and I got criticized for it as a rookie. You know, it was a great day as a rookie, but I was so mad because I knew what I just missed out on, and I knew that it's possible that I'm sitting here talking to you 15 years from now, from then, and it I haven't won it. You know, so I knew how close I was. And uh, I knew they don't grow on trees, those, those type of opportunities, you know, where you catch the, the right yellow, the right restart, you have new tires, and, um, you know, you're racing your dad for the lead. I mean, it was just, it was a, almost a fairy, fairy tale ending. Uh, by the time this day is done, the field for the 104th running of the Indianapolis 500, presented by Cambridge, will be set. Welcome to the world's greatest race course. Today will be the Fast 9 shootout. Question is, uh, does anyone have anything for Marco Andretti? It's, it's a stressful day because you have to get it, you know, just right from lap 1 to 4. You have to make sure to fall off, make sure you're not having to lift the last lap. So it's, it's about picking the right downforce nailing the conditions. The wind is brisk. It's got a heavy tailwind down this front straightaway, which meaning a headwind down the back. There's so much stuff you can't control that day, you know? So I think if you can 
just get that out of your mind and just go drive, it's, uh, it helps. I mean, they were talking about dominating the front row and uh, they're going to rely on Marco Andretti to have a car on the front row. Yeah, that's right. There's no car on the front row, which is a surprise at, at, when you had the fastest four times of yesterday. Fascinating run about to unfold before our very eyes. Marco Andretti into turn number one. 234 miles an hour, so he's matched Scott Dixon down the back straight away. Right now, there's not an Andretti car in the front row, so it's uh, we're gonna have some a lot of homework to do tonight and this afternoon to try and understand why that's the case. 74 starts for the Andretti family at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Three poles and all belong to Mario. Can his grandson Marco Andretti now duplicate that feat? He is right there with Scott Dixon. It is level on time and speed right now. 231, 485, the two lap average after lap number three. White flag in the air, so fast enough. 231.247 and three lap average. He's going to miss it. He's going to miss it. Final turn coming up. There has not been an Andretti on the pole position at Indy for 33 years. Can Marco do it? The yard of bricks is waiting. What does it say? Checker He's done it. Marco Andretti is on the pole position. He's done something that guy there, his father Michael, was never able to do. Marco Andretti is the pole sitter for the 104th Indianapolis 500. Hold, oh, buddy. I think this was huge for our family. You know, I think it's uh, it's it's kind of cool personally to, to have done something my dad didn't do. Three and four was sketchy. We needed this. Right, so um, so that feels cool. What do you think of the job your son just did? Fantastic. I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, the car was just so loose, and he just didn't he didn't take his foot off the throttle, and uh, he drove the hell out of it. You know, after the first three guys went, I'm like, we have no shot, and. Uh, but he kept it in there. He did a hell of a job. So I'm really happy for Marco. You know, uh, they've had a solid month, you know, and he deserves this. You know, I know uh, I know what this place means to his family and, and uh, him especially, and it's good to see him, I think, even under this pressure to make it, you know, work. It almost feels like a victory. The 33 year thing is awesome. Like the last poll for our family here was, I was two months old. This month of August has gone almost like a fairy tale and I'm not even gonna look back. I'm gonna try to steamroll it and keep the momentum going and try to win the race. Marco Andretti, Davey, a fascinating two days unfolded here for qualifying for the 104th 500. With that, race time is here. The 104th running of the Indianapolis 500 is about to get underway. We'd like to say good luck to all six Andretti Autosport drivers as they try to make history and end their day in victory lane. Once again, I'm Jamie Little. Thank you so much for joining us today and for being part of this special occasion.